everyone, and welcome to what is hopefully the first of many What's In My Bag plus purse review videos. I have stated previously that I've wanted to start including more fashion-oriented um, content on my channel, whether that be talking about higher designer goods like handbags here, thrifting, shopping, sustainability, secondhand, all that sort of stuff. There are several things coordinating with fashion and things like that that I'm very passionate about, as some of y'all will have seen in my haul videos. I've stated that I've wanted to do more styling videos and things that are a bit more in-depth part of my interests. And one thing I've sort of always wanted to do, as for anyone who grew up kind of in the height of the era of like, what's in my bag? And always being like, I remember watching those videos and looking in the comments and it being like, it's not so much as in a what's in my bag as a what bag am I carrying? And I remember the Celine luggage tote, the Alexander Wang um, Rocky crossbody. For those of us who remember and for those of us who know, you know. And so sort of jumping off of that, I have always wanted to do what's in my bag review uh, videos, bag reviews and such like that. A couple of y'all stated in my previous videos and on Snapchat that you said, yes, that's something you'd be interested in. So it is a niche personal interest of mine that I can exploit uh, for the sake of content and for pursuing my own interests and hobbies here on YouTube. So without further ado, we are gonna go into a what's in my bag and a review of the Tory Burch Lee Radzi Will Petite, no, double bag in small. Now I say small because um, this is in fact the largest size that they carry. They have a size under this and then a size under that. I will leave subsequent pictures here. I would honestly own one of these smaller ones. This one here is perfect size for me. I would own one of the smaller ones if it weren't for the fact that they are a newer model than this one and cost like just as well, not just as much. Original retail, this bag actually goes for around, I'll just round it out to about a thousand dollars, eleven hundred or twelve hundred. And kind of in comparison, you can get a second hand one, which is how I got both of these were second hand. This one is the first one that I bought off of the Real Real for a bit under. $500 including shipping and everything else. Whereas you can't really get any of the like small ones they originally retail for like 700, 800 or something and you can't get one for like under 500. And as I like to say, that's not a lot of bag for my buck. Whereas this, you get a nice amount size of bag, second hand, which is what I like to shop for a variety of ethical and price point reasons. So when I talk about bags, I try to think about it in ways of buying it like um, regular retail, but with price points and how I do, typically what I budget for is how much it's gonna cost me uh, second hand. So when reviewing bags and talking about them, I will try my best to put how much they are normal versus what I like to pay for and what I paid for them. And when I do pay lots of money for a handbag, things that I like to take into serious consideration is craftsmanship, quality, and materials, as well as price point to a certain degree. I admit, along with most all consumer goods, shit is overpriced, you are paying for the, the way I like to describe this bag because it's the Tory Burchley Radzi Will bag. It's an overpriced bougie bougie bag named by another rich person. You know, it's kind of like keeping that, keeping that 1% in the rotation. And as much as I love my luxury goods, I do try my best to purchase them secondhand to at least think that I am contributing to a small amount of personal sustainability. But we're just going to do the fun deep diving into why do we like what's in our bag videos because we're nosy snoopy people and we like seeing what other people carry around in them. And this is a perfect time for me to do this because I've been carrying both of these bags around for an extended period of time in the anticipation of me doing my review. I'm wanting to move on to something new 
So let's go through what's in here so I can stuff all this stuff into another handbag. Part of what I like about this bag is how much it can carry. It's about two pounds on its own. For those of you concerned about a heavy bag, it is a bit heftier. I don't mind having a heavier bag, especially when it's nice and sturdy. And when it comes to having a practical everyday bag, again, it is that level of practicality that I appreciate how much shit I can shove and store and organize in said bag. It's got nice three nice compartments here, here, and then you've got this little slit pouch going on here. You can actually put stuff in this area here. On the inside, it's only got um, two little pockets right here. That one right there and then a zippered one, not very large. So starting out, we have a notebook. I always like to virtue of a big everyday bag is how many books can you fit into it? And let me tell you, this can pack a lot of books. Typically my secret to be able, being able to bounce from one bag to the other is just keeping all my shit in different pouches. I've got my medical needs pouch here, which is one that was brought back, bought for me by my, neurologi my neurologist aunt, who is coincidentally also gay, so it's nice to see that it keeps running through the family lines. Little pouch she brought me back from Vietnam has got all of my chapsticks and my feminine hygiene needs and my nail file. Little eye drops going on here. All exciting. Apparently some jewelry that I had thrown in here at some point. Again, this is a good time to do this because I have a lot of stuff in here. It's gotten to the point where you just throw things in and you're like, eventually I'll go through and organize and sort through and the bag just keeps getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Again, I like keeping things all matched up and organized so that I have, I'm paranoid. I am between my girlfriend and I, she and I are both different varying levels of um, prepared. So should something happen, occur between the two of us, hopefully, we'd be able to take care of the situation. And in that same vein, I've got this lovely Urban Decay pouch from like the Vice 3, maybe 4. For those of you who know, you know. And this has got, oh my, I've got three chapsticks right here because chapsticks and hair ties are those things that no matter how many you have, you never have enough. And I've got pens because what is a purse without 50,000 pens? I've got my vape charger for when I was vaping, which I'm not currently anymore. A lighter for said non-vaping and my lovely handy dandy little Swiss Army knife. I'm part of a handbag subreddit, which we'll talk more about later, but someone did a what's in my bag picture and had it all nice out and it was this pastel wonderland. It's got all these color coded things and a knife just a beautiful pocket knife. And a lot of us in the comments were like that, absolute perfection. On to another pouch. This one actually was from my niece. And this honestly just has more, again, whenever I go from bag to bag to bag, depending on what situation, this is if I'm carrying everything and this is my haul to work bag. If I'm going to see friends over an extended period of time, I like to be prepared. And so in this one, we've got Advil, little caffeine squirt because caffeine is life. We have hydrocortisone cream and we have some Dayquil and NyQuil. I should honestly probably update this and put some, some ibuprofen and some Tylenol and some Tums and some Pepto-Bismol because again, being in emotional or physical distress, I don't like it and I like having things to be able to alleviate said distress in whatever way that I can. And if, if there is anything I have learned from dating my girlfriend is that um, in certain environments and in certain situations, I am woefully underprepared. But between her, her cargo pants, her canteen, and my purse, hopefully between us we can unite and be an amazing, prepared, queer couple. So, like I said, it has these two major pockets. You can see a little bit better here. You've got the fold bit here, and then this lovely, nice little zippered pouch area, which I 
really, really enjoy and find handy. The only thing that people might not like is in the, let me just show you what's in here and then we'll show another part. Obviously, I have got my lotion, my Pretty as a Peach Bath and Body Works. Use it because I have it even though they're not cruelty free. And I mean, they make good shit. This is one of my favorite Oh, favorite scents. Mine and my mother's both hanging on by the last thread of being. I have incredibly nasty, dry, low circulatory fingers. It is the winter time, which makes it 110 times worse, uh, basically, in order to keep these together. Every time I get my hands wet uh, and I dry them, I need to put lotion on them. Otherwise, they are cracked and bleeding and just nasty. We have the hairbrush because I have hair right now. Um, hopefully at some point I will have shorter hair, but for right now it is growing out and I like to look somewhat human when I'm at work and out and about, so hairbrush it is. Wallet, ever so obviously, hopefully. Uh, probably at this point you'll have seen the lovely vlog where I in fact left my wallet at home, tried to go home to get it, and then something happened to my car, which made it then so I couldn't finish going out and seeing friends. So that was all kinds of fun and stressful. And so I have it in my bag. And I love this. This is from like, oh my goodness, I was probably like 12 when I had this. And mom and I were going through stuff and I was like, that is totally amazing and awesome and in style. And I love it. And I never stopped loving it. Just in the back here, here again, I've had things. I organized things a little bit before I came on to show you because these were probably most majorly down at the bottom of the bag. And I was like, oh, I'll tuck them where they're supposed to go. But over the past couple of weeks, you know, you get one and you dump it in and then you forget to take the other one out and then you dump another one out. So we've got the professional natural lash clear. It's apparently for brows and whatever, but I don't have enough brows right now to not pencil them in. I've got my Pixie Hello Kitty Lip Tone Lip Gloss. Two liquid lip balms by Catrice. Yes, Catrice. Liquid lip balms going on here. And then a NYX. This is Milky Gloss. Just uh, with me and makeup now, I am enjoying and appreciating uh, less makeup. Though I want to work on incorporating a bit more. Kind of finding just that middle ground between feminine and masculine and gender identity and all that shit. So, as I was saying, the one thing that people may not like is the fact that with this middle section here, it actually doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the bag. You can reach under it. I kind of like that because I feel like it limits um, bulk in the bottom here. It makes it a bit more streamlined. If you're not putting large things down in there though, it can filter and sift in between either side under the little pocket in the middle. That's typically where I put my keys, my phone when I'm going out and about. I'll just throw that down in there and then I'm able to reach in and just pull it out. I've got another charge thing here. I've got keys. This charge here. I like to carry a toothbrush and a toothpaste because I, when I'm out and about, whether it's at work when I'm eating or whether it's at a friend's, and if my teeth get too fuzzy, too dirty, too whatever, I like to go and clean my teeth. Because it's a thing, it's a set, again, it's a level of discomfort I don't like having when I'm out and about. So being able to fix said discomfort is important to me. I've got another charger for the vape pen I am not using. I have nail clippers that should be in this bag. And an eyebrow pencil, the Alme the Almay brow pencil is that just what it's called yeah Almay brow pencil in brunette uh eventually i will find the 23 dollar anastasia beverly hills ones that hamlet stole and put somewhere but until then i've been using this one which has served me very well it's what's giving me fantabulous brows right now and then last but certainly not least this cute little cat mirror going on here was actually given to me by my lovely pharmacist who also likes all things witchy hoodoo voodoo you know all that shit so in no small amount this bag can fit a huge amount of stuff i love 
how freakishly practical it is. Now, the first time I had ever heard about this bag, I am a part of that purse forum r slash handbags on Reddit. And that's where I go to, you know, seek and pursue and find like-minded people in these lovely little niche subreddits. I absolutely adore Reddit for all things information gathering and just all that shit. And there was a post someone commented on, um, and this is a post that honestly happens a fair amount. I love the look of Hermes thus and such, or insert uber, uber, uber pricey, pricey brand, because thousand dollars for this, that is a drop in the bucket compared to other handbags on the market and other people are buying. And someone did post a, you know, I like the look of a Birkin and someone was like, ah, no, I like the look of a Kelly, or I'm pretty sure it's a Birkin, it's a Birkin. I will put picture here, and they posted this. And I was immedi immediately entranced, not even a huge fan or a big consumer of Tory Burch to begin with. You can also do it like this if you want to look relaxed and bougie and one percent -y. So, they posted about this bag and I kind of, it took me probably about mm, three to four months to save up enough money and to actually do enough research and study to know that this is a bag I wanted to invest in because when I spend a lot of money on a bag, I like to thoroughly research it, I like to have good quality materials. That subreddit is amazing for getting all kinds of information you need. You ask a question and they are there in droves to answer it for you. I had like bought and then sold one Tory Burch bag like forever ago. And again, like I said, I never had any inclination towards the brand. But from the first moment I opened this beautiful, buttery, delicious, amazingness, this is close to um, my number one bag. At some point we will talk about my number one bag, which is actually the Fendi Peekaboo. But this one I think is even more practical and it's just such an amazing bag. It's a bag that hasn't been, it was um, released in fall of 2020. So when you think about how long bags have been on the market, if you think about when the Birkin was invented, created, whatever, released, I suppose you could say, or the Fendi Peekaboo, which was in 2008, it hasn't existed on the market very long. However, that being said, I feel like with the price point originally versus also what you can get it for second hand. I think this is a bag that's gonna be a solid on the market for a pretty long time. Part of the reason being, again, I like to emphasize quality because again, when it comes to, I understand that a lot of the goods that I purchase when it comes to some of the sustainable clothing that I buy, especially to a hobby like this, it's overpriced. You're paying for the pack that it's it's a bougie bougie bag, you know? It's if you're going straight to someone who's just doing straight up the leather craft and stuff, you may not be paying as much of a premium simply for the fact that it's not Tory Burch, Hermes, Michael Kors, Chanel, Dior, insert a variety of bleh. But the materials on this, this has so many things going for it for me in like what I like in a bag. I adore pebbled leather. Pebbled leather is very, very durable. It takes a beating, and after it takes a beating, it lends itself very well to being TLC'd and loved back into being nice again. You know, it just ages really, really well. I also adore suede. Here you got this little thing from my, from my niece. It says, cat's meow. I adore the suede on the side. Here's the mixed material. Then you have the smooth. I'm not sure if this is calf skin or what. I will leave links down below to the normal site as well as if I can find anything on a secondhand site like the real real. I've been duped and I purchased a fake off of Mercari or Poshmark, I believe. Thankfully, I was able to return it, but the fakes for these are really, really deceptively good. So I do prefer 
shopping on a more reliable secondhand platform, though at some point we'll talk about the real real and fashion file and all of those wonderful things as well. Again, the quality of the material is just, I mean, I pulled it out and from the first, I just, I just, you, you could feel, you could feel the difference and when it comes to me spending my money i like being able to feel like that difference like when i spend a little bit more on my vintage coach being able to feel the quality of the materials and the craftsmanship and the stitching just that's what makes buying a luxury bag for me it's more about the quality and the construction and the design than trying to buy the designer though there always is a certain amount to that it is known as being like all kinds of like freakishly convertible like oh you can fold it this way and undo it this way and it's like a collared shirt and it's multi-use and versatile and practical and amazing i adore the fact that it's got this thick nice 30 30 sturdy one to do it like this if you want to do it on your elbow and feel like a one percenter also has a fantastic crossbody well not really a crossbody i have it on almost the lowest setting here and it's still pretty short so it rides right up about here not my favorite length but because of all the other wonderful things that it has going for it i kind of give it a pass on that i do wish that the strap was maybe a little bit thicker a little bit more along the lines of this than along the lines of this because of how heavy it is and because of how much you can put into it but i will say as someone who is i am rough i am mean i am nasty on my bags i am paying $500 for a bag that I'm going to use, that I'm going to put monsters in, that I'm going to carry at 11 p.m. to my night shift job at a hotel because this is the little bit of luxury that makes me happy. And I'm really abusive to my bags, and like I say, I appreciate a bag that is not just well constructed, but a bag that lends itself to being taken care of easily. I will probably never own any Chanel because Chanel's like, we love lambskin. We love soft, puffed lambskin. And I'm like, I'm gonna look at it wrong and it's gonna decrease in value. Not that owning bags is all about what it retains its value, but when you're putting that much money into something, I'd like it to maybe retain itself a little bit more than what it does. I do love the first time that I got one of these. I was desperately trying to figure out, I'm like, how come it doesn't, it, it's, it's not snapping. It's not, but you have to, it's bougie. You gotta twist it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's what that's that's the thousand dollar premium right there right there I will admit that when it comes to price point and me buying a thousand dollars is as much as I love this bag I have a very difficult time saying that I would be okay spending at that 500 absolutely this one was this is one of the more expensive bags that i have purchased because it is in fact this is the first one i got in the beautiful brown and black and tan colorway but for all of those of you who know and if you didn't know you know now green is my favorite color and all be all everything if i can have a handbag in green and brown i will live the rest of my life happy and they had his bag in green and as much as I would like to own all of these in just about every size and every color that they have, I can actually say that I am at a good amount of purse piece with just the two that I have here. The construction is gorgeous, immaculate. It is a very practical handbag. I would certainly go back and pay, you know, a little under five for this one. I think the quality of these bags it's got the little feet going on there just if you're familiar with like contemporary coach prices and even like I would say you know Michael Kors and Kate Spade range if you're willing to go second hand rather than get something you know not saying they're not good quality but when you bring second hand into the equation the ability to get this level of bag for $500 if you know is just 
absolutely phenomenal and it is worth every single blinking penny. These are two bags that I simply absolutely do not regret purchasing in any way. When people ask for a practical bag or ask what one of my favorites is, this is just a all time beautiful. It gives you that little like Hermes Birkin, I'm rich and I'm bougie, but I don't have 20 grand to buy a bag. I am eventually going to do a video talking about searching for a Birkin, and it's going to be me talking about all the bags that I have found that I love that emulate the Birkin look without buying into Hermes and without, you know, being a Birkin and spending however many bajillion thousand of that circus. If you are a handbag connoisseur who really, really appreciates style, design, and quality, I just, I think this is a uh, diamond in the rough isn't the right. Again, Tory Burch is one that just didn't, to me, didn't scream luxury and whatever, but when you take a look at this bag and I take into consideration what you can get it for secondhand, honestly, what it sells for. Um, because in comparison, I have, um, again, a couple Fendi peekaboos and other things, bags that retail originally higher than this that I think aren't worth as much original price as this is. You know, the original $1,000 for this is much more like, yeah, the, the, that's worth it compared to some of the however many thousand for some of my peekaboos. It is just a staple quality. Like I said, it's got everything I want from design. The materials, I love the bold stitching. We'll have talked about that already in my Vintage Coach collection video. I just, I have been very excited to talk about this bag and wax eloquent about it and tell everybody how much I love it. All the little details, like the emboss, the monogram going on there on the little buttons for how much they're charging. They they better they be, they better give me details, like so many little details. The quality of the glazing here and the stitching, and again, just how with how hard and rough and gnarly I am with my bags. I've been like, oh, it's gonna slap and it's gonna and it goes like this, and then you're able to cinch it up like this, and it goes like, I, I love this, I love this, love, 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 love this bag. They give me so much joy as a collector, as a fashion thing, as someone who has a higher appreciation for quality materials than I did when I was younger. I just, this is a really, really good, this is a really, 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 really good bag. I've been super excited to share this one with y'all. It is a favorite. It is one that we'll see if I continue to collect more because it is a pricier, like if I'm collecting more vintage coach, that's going to be less of a significant drop in the bucket of my finances than going for something higher up. Although apparently coach and Tory Burch, even for the prices it has, that's like not even like considered luxury that's just like contemporary which i understand like oh my goodness prices and like whatever but i was like coach i understand it's leather and it's good quality but that's a lot of money being a socially aware consumer is slightly exhausting but I'm hoping to learn more about that and then impart my passion and knowledge to you. And in that today is that I do in fact recommend and love and enjoy as a luxury designer handbag, the Tory Burch Lee Radzi Will Double Bag in Small. All right, everyone. I hope y'all enjoyed that review. Obviously, as I do more, as that I go forward with my channel, hopefully, I'll be able to have more, you know, just more polished videos, but I've kind of been holding myself back in the sense of it has to be perfect. It has to be amazing for the, for, I, can't, I can't do a video unless it's going to be perfect. And it's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect, but it's not going to get any better if I don't actually start. So I would love to hear what y'all have to say about this bag, about other bags, about other bag reviews and other things you would like to see down below. I'm just pursuing this like I pursued my first YouTube channel. 
showing my interest in doing this as a hobby and self-expression and hopefully finding other like-minded people to share my passions with. To everyone who made it this far, thank you so much. Give yourselves a participation trophy and a big giant gold fucking star. Y'all deserve it for listening to me talk about my niche interests. Thank you, and I hope to see y'all either in the next video or vlog. Bye!